For centuries, the marriage of princes was considered a matter of state that allowed alliances with other countries. Who chose the bride was the king, advised by the court. Then messengers left to ask the father of the chosen one for her hand and, if the request was accepted, the princess traveled with a large entourage to meet her future husband. The bride and groom only saw each other on the eve of the wedding. If they liked each other, so much the better, if they didn't, they'd marry anyway. Now, in the year 1334, the king of Portugal, Dio Afonso IV, decided that D. I. Pedro, his eldest son and heir to the throne, would marry D. Constanca Manuel, a girl of the highest nobility in Spain. The request was accepted by the king of Spain, and the date on which the bride would travel to Portugal was agreed. Naturally, she was received with great pomp, but the shadow of a woman hovered over this wedding from the beginning. Because in D. Constanca's entourage there was a very beautiful maid named Inés de Castro, and it was with her that the prince fell in love. D. A. Pedro had no choice but to marry the chosen bride, but, as expected, the couple was never happy, as the prince maintained a secret romance with his beloved. Everyone at court ended up finding out what was going on, and the king was enraged by his son's disobedience. In fact, D. Pedro was not willing to put an end to the great love of his life, he continued to look for D. Ines, who had also fallen in love with him. Fate seemed to make life easier for them. Because D. Constanca died early, and D. I. Pedro was free to marry again. As the king did not authorize it, they began to live together, but D. I. Ness did not attend court. Time went by and the love that united them never faded. When they already had three small children, they settled in Coimbra to spend a season in a hunting lodge that stood on the banks of the Mondego River. In a place where the Quinta das Lagrimas is today. At court, which was located in a relatively close palace, the intrigues gave rise to very violent comment. Disturbed by these words, the king decided to leave, but he told the three evil ones who accompanied him. As soon as the king turned his back, they stabbed her without mercy. D. Ines's body fell by the fountain and the blood flowed over the stones leaving a red stain there that no one has ever been able to erase. It is still there today. Remembering the horrendous crime committed by three men who murdered a woman alone and defenseless who had done no harm to anyone. D. Pedro, when he found out about it, was mad with grief and took up arms against his father. The conflict was prolonged, but the prince ended up agreeing to make peace and pretending to have forgotten the matter. However, as soon as he ascended the throne, he sent for the murderers, managed to capture two, and condemned them to death. According to legend, he was so angry that he had their hearts ripped out, one through the chest and the other through the back. Afterwards, also according to legend, he had Inés de Castro dug up to seat her on the throne and force the court, which had not accepted her as his wife, to kiss her hand after she was dead. In fact, what D. Pedro did was to have two wonderful tombs sculpted, one for his beloved and the other for himself, so that they would rest side by side for all eternity. The tombs, true works of art, can be admired in the monastery of Alcabaca. And the love story with a tragic end inspired poets, painters, musicians. There is no lack of poems, plays, paintings and operas reminiscent of the romance between D. Pedro and D. Inés. Luis de Camoyange dedicated magnificent verses to them in his magnificent work, O.S. Lusiadas.